So I created off the top of my head uh, my version of the Donald Trump card trick inspired by Penn Jillette um, from Penn & Teller. It uses two um, deck of cards. We'll start off by using this one, which is a bicycle deck. As you can see, the cards are in fact all different. Okay. Now, <clears throat> let's say Donald Trump is the magician, all right? And as he wants to be president, he starts by having the American people pick a card. Okay, now the selection of the card really doesn't matter, but in this case we've got the five of diamonds, okay? And Trump does not know this, okay? Now the campaign starts, he takes the card and places it back in the middle of the deck, and as a candidate for president, he, he has to figure out what that card is and find it. Now as the campaign uh, goes on, uh, he shuffles, he has the card shuffled by the American people, and he can say whatever he wants, really. Um, so, for example, he can say, I have a perfectly ordinary deck of cards, and Mexicans are rapists. He can also say, I have a perfectly ordinary deck of cards, and no Muslims can come into our country. Therefore, the First Amendment is completely obliterated. But uh, with that said, um, eventually, um, Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump go back and forth with the, the debates. Now, as, as the American people are kind of fighting back and forth with who should be the next president of the United States, eventually election day comes. Now we're going to do two piles here. One pile is going to represent Donald Trump's votes, and the other is going to represent Hillary Clinton's votes. Now, it really doesn't matter how you slice it, you can just put a few here, um, put a couple there, it um, really doesn't matter. But anyways, all the votes are eventually being put down, people are making their final decisions on election day. Now once uh, um, people have made their votes and all the polls closed, now the votes have to be counted. And this is the long waiting game, um, state, state by state, the people, election people are counting up the votes. And first they count up Hillary's votes, and then they also count Trump's votes at the same time. Now each, let's pretend each uh, uh, each pile represents certain states. You know, some are representing Florida, some are representing New York, North Dakota, South Dakota, you name it. Okay. Now, on in when we're looking at it from Hillary's. Um, point of view, it seems like things are going her way. You know, she has a lot of um, female support on her part, and she had the potential to become the first female president in the United States. And because of that female support, it seems like the cards or the votes are playing in her favor. Because by the looks of it, she had all of the queens and the votes in her favor. So it looked very promising for Hillary, but somehow, Donald Trump was able to convince um, many uneducated American people to work the vote in his favor and somehow he got the cards, or in this case the votes, in his favor and he managed to get all the four aces in the deck, therefore beating Hillary Clinton and therefore becoming the next president of the United States. But he still hasn't, yeah, he still hasn't got to the part where has to figure out what the card was in the beginning. Now, after after the election has finally ended and now he's becoming the next president of the United States, he clean handedly shows the first card and says, Is this your card? And it's the Jack of Spades, not the Five of Diamonds, because to us, he's an idiot and he would never get it right. But, perhaps, he might throw in a sucker punch and be like, Look, you might think I'm an idiot, but I know what I'm doing as president of the United States. Will that be the case for Donald Trump as president of the United States? I guess we'll find out in the next four years. And when you're alone, do you say my name or you say her name?